Hi. Okay. So it's October 18th, 2017, and I'm speaking with Katie, who was in the courthouse in Tennessee Eastern District Court with the hearing that just went on with HATJ and RKB. So tell us what you heard, saw, and felt. Hey, Beezy. So I've got Lisa here with me. Can you hear us okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, so basically, the beginning of the hearing, um, Randy was there as well. Uh, Heather did most of the talking in the beginning. And um, I guess first, Shirley asked, what was he asking? He was um, wanting to know about the precipe, and he was asking, oh, sorry, now they're cutting the lawn over here. Go figure. Um, <laughs> Um, he was he was talking about the press pay and was asking Heather questions in regards to that, and he asked if, um, which I thought was interesting, if she had authority to order the court to perform what was in the press of pay. Um, and so that, it kind of was just, I mean, they went around in circles and circles. There was a lot of mockery that I felt was done. Um, so you could tell that both Judge Shirley and the... Um, the United States, the attorneys, that they were very just uncomfortable in the whole situation. Um, and, I mean, basically, Heather just wanted to know if they had any authorization to be able to um, to have jurisdiction over them, if they had proof that because of now where we're at that they are responsible for, for showing the, the burden of proof and, um, and they were not, they didn't have anything to provide her. Um, and so I'm trying to think of anything else specifically that I'm leaving out. Lisa, can you think of anything? Um, for me, I like to speak to the energetics of the situation. Yep. Um, and, and I really felt as though mm, it was it was taken seriously. There was a lot of, like you said, mockery. Um, mockery. They were make, poking fun at how ridiculous things sound. And to me, I could see a lot of um, cognitive di dissonance. <laughs> um, the, the, <laughs> the truth that Heather was stating were, were just winging over everybody's head, and, the, and they were sticking very closely to, to uh, not necessarily a script, but what yes. they believe to be the truth of the matter. Even you know, uh, it's funny that you say script because it sounded extreme. It, it sounded it extremely rehearsed. rehearsed to me. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was very rehearsed. Um, everything that Shirley first started talking about when the um, when the defense went up there to talk, basically they were just reiterating the same thing that he had said. Like, it, I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, and just one part that I found very interesting was that Heather specifically. Um, asked Judge Shirley what happens whenever their their clerks file anything where that where that paperwork goes like what happens to it and he you know said I don't know and so she told him she was like well it goes to this person then it goes to that person then it goes to this person and then it goes to the Federal Reserve and is then um, monetized and looked at by by J P Morgan and I think that um, just then they just don't have the understanding they can't comprehend that because they just don't they don't understand the system as well as they. And um, it seemed like to, they're concerned about crazy acting now. Oh, so we're going to say that there are no courts and there's no right. authority. And, and, and he wanted to point out how silly it all was. And what I, Shirley the way that. Point out how, surly, how silly the concept that Heather was trying to bring yes. forward. Yes. 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 But he didn't. Okay. But he didn't address. Did he address any of the? Uh, I mean, Heather didn't just write a little letter that said, "Hey, I'm the Queen of Africa," and that's an inside joke if people right. have been following OPPT. Uh, I'm the Queen of Africa, a purported Queen of Africa, and um, I just say these things. I mean, these are it's case law because it's standing yeah. law. It's unrebutted. Mm -hmm. did, did Shirley address yeah. any of the pursuit? specificity and particularity in the actual precipe which gives all of those details and evidence. That's what a precipe does. Well, right. And you see, what, what they kept trying to say was that there was no, um, what do they call it? Not a not a justification. Is that what they call a justification? Precedent? The document? No, they said they said they, want, they needed a, um, 
was it just a justification? Uh, the term they needed, they wanted to specifically say something a on judgment. a judgment. A judgment. That's oh. what they wanted. They wanted it to specifically say judgment on the filings, and they didn't want to accept the fact that if if you you know give do you know do notice of of the filings and all of that, and they don't you know rebut it that 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 is itself. Um, a judgment. A judgment. a judgment. Yes. yes. And so they kept. They kept. I mean, he did not like that the paper just didn't specifically say judgment, even though it was referenced throughout the Declaration of Facts. They kept calling. He kept calling. It, it seems to me to highlight the fact that nobody really understands yes. how the system works and what is actually happening. And it just kept. So, he was going through almost line by line. Line by line. Recipe. Yeah. And great. Let me stop you for and one second. Let me yeah, let me stop sure. you for one second. So in your feeling sense, because yeah. they're judges and they actually have a um, bill of services that they can look through and they call up for when they're charging different things. That they actually know. They might not know, quote unquote, or, or want to tell you that they know the rest of it. But those things, that's right. just common way practice is done. If you're a judge at the level judge that these people are. They know yeah. the menu of services and they know how the charging is going. So what I want you to all feel into is when you're looking this with a slightly different perspective. So they know how that works. Can you parse out if they were not willing to, uh, in a linear term, fess up to the fact of knowing? Or was... So in other words, the the scripting that you may have been seeing may have been how to sort through <laughs> all of what is so and what yeah. they know and how they could pick their words point. carefully to only reveal some things. Yes. Right. And they and they were playing again, I mean, even in I know, like I read through the um the attention hearing, they were playing on words big. They were trying to catch Heather to say, you know, specifically get her to say certain things and she stands strong on on what the truth was, and not, and not what they were perceiving it to be. Right. And I think um, what I find interesting too is Heather mentioned that it's like, it's like a Joel scene. Like they're, they're like they're. She said like right before, almost like right before you you know a spirit leaves the body. Like you're you're jolting into it, and so they're they're just now like they're, this is them like jolting and trying to figure out like what's going on. Like they're they're in shock right now from from just everything in general, and they're trying to process what right. what's happening. So right. um, just knowing that and just. You know, trying to help them through that, I think, is what everyone is what we're trying to to just keep going at this point. Absolutely, because because their higher selves are now flowing into their bodies. There's no place to run and hide now. Right. They actually have an inner, deep inner knowing of what's going on, and so the cognitive dissonance is between their ego self and their true self coming in. And and remember too that they work in this whole system, and so there right. also is fear on a lot of levels. Not only because you know there's all this revelation coming on, but there's fear when they walk out the door. They're still playing their role, and who's going to whack them when they walk out the door? Yep, the back door, right. their back door. Yeah. So yeah. lots yeah, it was of love to them room. is really That's helpful. Sure. Yeah. Okay, and what did they have any, was there any standing on the disposition of Randall? No, um, they tied everything together. He, I know that um, specifically he made a couple statements because um, the defense said that they, I mean, they called both Heather and Randy um, sovereign citizens. And so um, Randy did, you know, dispute that and make it clear for the record that that is not what's happening. That's not, you know, it's an oxymoron in itself, which is what um, Heather uh, pointed out, and so um, yeah, that was that was the main the main thing that that um, Randy wanted to add in there, and um, and I you know I found it really interesting too. He made it. He specifically said, I guess in one of the other hearings, um, Judge Shirley had asked him if if he is God, and then that's why you know um, he's able to do what you know what he wants to do, and then so Randy actually just rephrased the question right back to him, and he was like, Well, so are you saying you're God and that you have jurisdiction over you know and that you can you can control you know, my being and what and and everything in regards to me and I feel like he kinda just like played it off. Like I don't feel like he really gave a um a concrete answer to that. 
but yeah. well, yeah, because he was surprised because he'd beaten Randy down right. the last hearing, and 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 Big Randy showed up today. <laughs> So yeah. Feels oh yeah. Like, he, I mean, he was, he was like, hold on. I have something I need to say. Like, he was like yeah. really quick. Like, hold on. I need. I have a comment to make to that. Yeah. Um. Right. So yeah. I mean, it was it was great. It was. I mean, it was it was really good. It was really good. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. And what was the uh, demeanor reactions from the um, prosecution? And were all of them there? Was the lead prosecutor there, or just her second? So it was, it was no, the two remember. girls. And a man, and, two, and two, then two male. Parker still. Yeah. Okay. On that table. Davidson, what's her? I can't remember her first name. And then, yes. I heard it nine times. I know. Since literally, Cynthia Heather said their names so many times, and yeah. of course, we can't remember them. <laughs> yeah. Cynthia Davidson, and. Um, there you go, yeah. Yeah. And Silvada was the second. She was the one who wrote. Um, the opinion to the resp- uh, in the response, and okay. but what I want to know is, um, hang on one second here. Um, so was Nancy Stallard Har? She is the lead uh, U.S. attorney oh, prosecutor. So she wasn't even there. Is that what you're saying? There were only two no. prosecutors, Cynthia Davidson and Amory Silvato. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The two. Nancy Star yes. Har was not present. I don't think so. No. Very No, because the only other two females were the ones that worked for the courts. There was there was a woman that was, you know, transcribing it and then another woman um up in the front near near Judge Shirley. Or there's three. Yeah, there's three up there. But they were all, I mean, they all worked for the courts. There was no one else in the prosecution that was there. Yeah. Okay. So So that means that the head uh, United States um, prosecutor was not, uh, for Knoxville, the USAO, was not present, which is very interesting. So she just sent her her two second chairs there, and, and she didn't arrive. Yep. Yeah. Basically, okay. I think I think that's very uh, I think that's very telling. And when I yeah. speak with Heather later and put that live, um, we'll we'll hear more about that. But um, good, okay. And what was your sense too of Parker? Still, any anything you can relay to people about Parker? Did he ever say anything, or was no. he just sitting there? Honestly, I don't even know which one was him. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what's wrong. No. Like they, they didn't. They didn't say anything. Like they were very quiet the whole time. They and it's very quiet, except for before the judge came in. Those girls were giggling like hyenas, and I almost wondered if it was nervous laughter or cocky. I uh, well, mm-hmm. I think it was both. Like they were. They. I mean, they kind of had that that arrogance to them. I feel yeah. like. Um, but you could tell that they were very, very. Um, on edge during it. I mean, I, I was having to watch them when they were like drinking water, like sh- you know, they were shaking pretty bad. So you can tell they were definitely on edge, but they were trying to 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 put a different face on for it. Yeah, for sure. So uh, take us to the last few moments, um, if you can recall, what was kind of the wrap up? I would imagine Judge Shirley was one of the, the last, if not the last, to speak. And what was the sense, the energy read you got of each of the prosecutors, Judge Shirley, and uh, still as they all ended the particular proceedings and the gavel came down? Um, For me, I felt a huge sense of relief, like a... And he he even got a little... um, He was a little more lighthearted because he had made reference to the fact that, you know, Heather was using different terminology than he's accustomed to. This was not, he's not ruling on emotion, but yet and still he was going to take this yep. under advisement. Um, and he seemed more lighthearted at the end. Uh, yeah, yeah. And like, okay, so this is done. We, you it know. It was really surprising in that what he did was he said, well, I think we need to take a, a break or whatever. Uh, recess, and I was expecting him to say, We'll come back after an hour, yeah. whatever. But he didn't. He said we'll we'll reconvene at the next date scheduled. Um, 
and I, I have to do a ruling one way or the other, whether it's from the, an order or, or any of this. I've got to do some sort of ruling. Um, and that was really it, collectively. Yeah, that was it. Was it. <laughs> and, then, and then they called. Heather, we all came out, including Heather, and uh, then they called her back in because she got a, uh, a notice at 9 o'clock last night that she needed to do a... Um, a drug test uh, before getting here in the morning. She wanted to get out an hour early, which is why she contacted them in the first place to say, mm -hmm. "Can we leave an hour early so that we can get there in time?" Because I've got some motion, I've got some um, filings to do beforehand and some copies to get made. And they got back to her and said uh, nothing about that, and that you need to come in before you even go there. And, and no, you can't get out early, but you have to come by and, and get drug testing. And so that was a little freaky. Um, but it all worked out. She ended up not having to do it until afterwards, so they brought her back down. And, and personally, I was a little worried she wasn't going to come back up because I didn't know what his ruling was going to be. Um, but she comes out with her elbow counsel and just as jovial as always, because she knows a lot more about what's going down than most of us have a clue. Because right. <laughs> uh, it's, it's happening on so many different levels. I've learned right. so much in this last six, eight weeks with, with her, and I'm still processing a lot of it. And half a day, there are weeks and weeks that I spent most of the time just sleeping so that my body could integrate part of what was being transmitted. Right. <laughs> Let's just right. put it that way. <laughs> right, exactly. But... Um, she she just sees what she's saying and, and what I noticed that she was saying, that she really, really feels for everybody because she knows that this whole thing is kind of in the last throes. It's like before somebody transitions over, um, right. it's, it's like this not wanting to let go of the body because there's a fear of what's coming up, even though what's coming up is full alignment with all that is. Um, there's this last shuddering and that's kind of what everything is what everything is going through every bit of creation is going through right now and so she sees that in in all of them and she just her heart is just wide open and that's where her consideration is along with everybody else absolutely absolutely well and that's what i say you know it's it's very important if people want to move this along and and you know someone says well where's the and where is the answer? What did they rule? Well, one of the best ways to do that is for everybody to open their hearts, for them all to in integrate um, and have this awakening, and then send love and energy to aid, they have, you know, Judge Shirley and the rest have to do it themselves, but to aid them in allowing that heart opening and that integration. And that will get you what, you know, each individual wants, or they say think they want, is to get an answer <laughs> to this court case Definitely. quicker. And, and that's what I think a lot of us were doing when we were in there. I know I was. And then when I came out, I found myself doing energy work on the grounds here. There's a, there are a lot of circles around here. Um, yeah. And then I, I started moving my hands. I'm going, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, that's what I'm doing. Okay. Um, and, you know, and, and what, I, what I felt was that this was a merging of, of what we would consider dimensional frequencies, but it's really it's the dissolving of the barriers between them and the full integration of all of that. That's what I was gathering when I was um, allowing myself to be a conduit for whatever was going on there. Um, and I, it makes perfect sense. Right. And what did Judge uh, Shirley, he said he needed to take it under advisement and uh, so that he yes. can basically review it. He's actually, you know, read between the lines, i got to get someone to to tell me what the right. hell I'm supposed to do. Right. Um, and did he give a specify a date? Said, Pardon? Did he specify a date? Yeah, the next the next uh, scheduled court date, which is in January. That's not true. Heather heard. No, I don't. I didn't hear anything about thirty. No, days. no. The, the thirty days is for the the press. He has thirty days to respond. Oh, or, yeah. Or put yeah. put the press he in the record. Like gotcha. He, yeah. That's his role. So Heather believes what she says. Well, she really feels like it's not going to go until then, yeah. um, but and that he's got to figure out a way of what he really does need to do with all of this and how he's going to handle being the one to do all of this, 
you know, from, I mean, that's a, that's a massive responsibility oh, yeah. to be the guy yeah. to make any kind of release or ruling or whatever it is that he decides to do. And he doesn't want to do it in front of a, a courtroom of people, I imagine. No. Right. Um, well, and as he said, as he's on record saying in his interview, is that he's been led to by God to mm-hmm. this. To, he never sought out being a judge, and he certainly didn't sought, seek out being the chief magistrate judge. And he's been in training all of his life to be where he is right this moment. Right. And just at the time he's ready to give it all up, which is kind of perfect as well. Yep. But I think he's having a really difficult. I mean, I, like anybody would, I imagine, who is so steeped in something that they believe to be true for so yeah. long, and that everybody else around them believes to be true, and he's hearing things, and he's 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 got to look into that, um, that that undo everything he thought he ever stood for as far as the law was concerned. So, well, you know, and it's not as, as far small. as as far as everything, because it's a koan. I mean, it's a really great example of a koan, which means. You know, your brain kind of explodes because <laughs> everything you thought was so take is, take the is really not so. <laughs> right. Right. Okay, and and there was no uh, discussion of Randy's disposition? No. Okay. Nope. All right. Okay, well, perhaps they can make a – he and his elbow can make a motion now to um, – uh, you know, get that he wait. Um, I'm not sure you can make a motion because that would be actually admitting that the system is actually legit. legitimate. So it's more about the precipice. That's what there's so much. There was so much discussion about the precipice itself because it was an order, and he was like, "Who are you to order me? And what gives you the authority to tell me that I got to show you my authority?" And and you know that. Everybody else always comes in and makes, well, almost everybody, he says, comes in and makes motions, and you're not doing that. You're giving me an order. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So there's Patricia coming up. You might want to say hello to her. I'm not sure if she wants to talk, but um, that's Randy's uh, cousin. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, tell, tell Patricia that I'm on the phone and if she want, uh, that I'm recording. If she wants to talk, that's great. Can you if, you not... phone, if you'd like to come over? BZ is on the phone and she just wanted you to know that she'd like to speak with you if you wanted to. Yeah. All right. She says she'll call you later, BZ. Okay, that's what I figured. All right, cool. Okay, well, thank you guys. I'll put the recording up. Anything last thoughts you want to add? Nope, I think that was everything. Thanks, Judy, for Rob. You wrapped it up very nicely. (laughs) So. Great. Oh. I appreciate it. I love you guys, and we'll all start sending. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I love great you too. Thank you. Energy. All right. I'm grateful. Thoroughly grateful for everything that you are and that you do. Me yeah. as well to you. Bye-bye. Love you guys. Bye. Love you. Bye.